Hello again, friends. Welcome to another episode of Leading from Alignment with our good friend, John Kopolowski. How are you today, John? Jim, I'm so good uh, today. Really, yeah. am. it's been so much fun. We've been recording podcasts today. And, uh, you yeah. know, the French, the friendship that uh, God has given to us is, is something I value deeply. And even in the middle of recording, uh, we just have moments, you know, that are unplanned, yeah. unplanned moments where we I feel like God really just drop something into our heart to share. And it's fun to do that together. So yeah. I'm yeah. doing great. We, you know, we are recording between these. We should have a bloopers and highlight reel or behind the scenes thing at the end of the year. That would be uh or do we not want people to know what we're talking about? I'm, not, I'm like, not sure about that. I'll have to think about that. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're very honest as good friends are. We, we say what That's we true. mean without filters, which is, which is That's right. Great. So uh, I understand a, a couple of podcasts ago, someone asked you a question. They, they said, hey, what about how can you enjoy a day off? And again, yeah. this podcast, the same dynamic. Do you have that question in front of you by any chance? What's, yeah, I do. Someone asked for us to so discuss. One of our, our regular uh, listeners, and I don't know if this person listens or watches or both uh, the yeah. podcast, uh, but he, he sent me a note. He said, John... Uh, if you could, if you guys, you and Jim could do a podcast on, on the following, that would be such a help to yeah. me. And, and, he, and he said this, John, help me to understand that I, that not everyone is going to like me as a leader yeah. and, and how that isn't necessary for me to bear fruit. Um, help me yeah. to understand that not everybody in our church is going to row in the same direction as I'm rowing. Um, help me to understand, tell me, he says, John, tell me that it's okay that not everybody's going to love my vision uh, and my playbook and my values. And so that's yeah. really the genesis of, yeah, these are traps that that's yeah. essentially what this, this young leader he's a young leader. He's a great guy um, yeah. is really saying, he says, these are, these, uh, well, he didn't say, call them traps. But essentially, they are right. These are yes. very common yeah. traps that a leader right. will fall into, and I'd like us to just unpack that together today. Yeah, I, I think "traps" the right word because it's a place where you get captured, where you get stuck, where you don't progress beyond you. I'm going to make everybody happy, or I'm not going to progress. You might as well just skip the first part of the sentence and just say the last part. I'm not going to progress, right? Because I, you know, how long did it take to get someone to sign the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution? I mean, years before the Constitution was signed. And these are all intelligent people wanting to go in the same direction and they they couldn't agree. It's uh, it is a a difficult, difficult. Let's let's go so far to say at times impossible expectation that everyone will want to go where God is leading you. Not everybody wanted to follow Moses. Not everybody wanted to follow David. But everybody wanted to follow Jesus. So who do we think we are right. that we're going to do this so well? I mean, in fact, I think the only person everybody wants to follow is the Antichrist. Let's just start there. <laughs> let's 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 be let's be very mindful of the fact that if everybody's agreeing with you, you might be biblical. So I don't mean that. That's a bit of a wise guy. Great. So so, so, me, so what keep going? Yeah. So let me kind of give these at a high level, these three traps, and then we'll dig into yeah. each one. Okay. So I'm going to give them to yeah, you yeah. real quick, just at a high level, and then we'll, we'll dig into each one. So the first trap, yeah. wanting everyone to like us, you know, Jim, I want everyone to like me. I really sure. do. But over yeah. time I've discovered that everyone liking me is not a prerequisite to leadership success. No, it would be nice if everybody liked me, but it's not necessary. The second trap, yeah. wanting everyone in, the church or business we lead to be rowing in the same direction. <laughs> now, I, I think most leaders want every person who walks through the doors of their church or their company to be on board. I, I really believe sure. that. But I only think, I don't know, I think that only happens in heaven. Yes. Yeah. I think that, you, that you're describing heaven in, in that yeah. uh, scenario. And then wanting everybody to jump on board with your vision and, and the playbook and the values, the, the, the behaviors that matter. And I think, again, most leaders want everybody, right, to catch the vision, sure. to yeah. embrace the core yeah. values, to be disciplined, yeah. to run uh, the playbook. But truth be told, not everybody will. Nope. So in the above, those above scenarios, those three scenarios, how can we avoid getting entangled in these traps. So let's talk about that first one, Jim. And then I, I welcome yeah. your feedback as we go through these. Um, not uh, the trap of wanting everybody to like you. Um, yeah. Now, listen, 
not being constrained by the obsessive need to be liked is not mm-hmm. the same thing as caring and obnoxious. I don't care what anybody thinks about me. Yeah. Attitude. Right. Yeah. So I'll just yes. be my nasty old self. Um, right. And who cares if people like me or not? We're not talking yeah. about that. I, I want to yeah. make that perfectly right. clear. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus had deep compassion for people. Yes. He dealt with them gently and carefully, and at the same time, often pointedly, right? I mean, yes. he, yeah. uh, he didn't mince words. Uh, yes. He knew who he was. He knew who he, who, whom he belonged to. Yep. And he knew he didn't need the approval of others to complete his mission. Yeah. Right? Huge. And, and, and so give me some feedback. I got a couple of other thoughts on this trip, but I'd like to hear your well, thoughts right now. Yeah, those, those things that you just said, I think really are the freedom that people are looking for. We, we do have to know who we are or we'll be looking for someone to make us yes. something that we would consider valuable. So you know, once your name goes from Jim to Pastor Jim, mm. that's, that's a heady thing, right? Unless you knew who you were before that. If you were Pastor Jim before someone called you Pastor Jim or, or you're comfortable with being Jim, and you don't need people to call you Pastor Jim. It's a, it's a much safer place to be. So I, I it's a, it's such a strange combination. I the two things that have helped me stay balanced in that, if if I have stayed balanced in it, is that I am I am every man's servant. I've said this before, yes. but I only have one master. And and so at the end of the day, if everybody I've made everybody happy, but I've grieved him, I've failed mm-hmm. my master. If everybody thinks I'm an idiot, and he says, "Well done, good and faithful servant," I'm I'm going to agree with him. I, I so in the end of it. And, and our hopes to, to lead as many as we can, as far as they'll go, There's, that's noble, that's honorable, but understanding that it's probably an unattainable goal. And sooner or later, you're just going to have to decide that what you're doing is making Jesus happy, or you have to change it. So I promise you this, though, making everybody happy every time is impossible. And even if it weren't impossible, I doubt you could make Jesus happy. You, mm-hmm. you are an agent of change. You're, you're not just a shepherd mm-hmm. that stands there Good. because eventually the field that they're eating in is destroyed by the sheep that eat it. You have to move to green pastures. You have to move to new waters. You have mm-hmm. to, it's just part of the process. So it isn't in the standing still. It isn't, it isn't on Monday, generally, the churches fall apart. It's in the opinions of Sundays or midweek services or small groups where, where churches are into the issue. So I I would say disenthrall yourself with the thought that everyone's going to be happy. If everybody's happy at any given moment, celebrate the moment because it, it's fairly rare. That's and, right. Uh, you know, and there's this drive, right? It, that's unhealthy. I think there, there is this unhealthy drive to be liked. And I think it's rooted yes. primarily Jim in identity fracture. Yes. Yeah. You know, we I, don't and, and describe that what that means. Identity yeah, fracture. My, my identity fracture. Here's what I mean. We don't fully get how loved and valued by God we are. Yes. Yeah. We've not fully tapped into, if you're his son or his daughter, we have not fully tapped into how pleased he is with those of us yeah. who surrendered our lives to him. Yeah. And so I, we, we, we talk about identity quite a bit. It's a common thread, Jim, in our pods. But I think the reason we keep coming back to it over and over again is we realize uh, how hard we have to work at establishing and maintaining a healthy sense of identity. And and, and when we do tap into that, how powerful it it is, how it frees us uh, to be truly the best version of who God has created us to be. Yes. And we yeah. operate out of not a deficit of approval and affirmation. We operate out of an abundance of that. And it just, it just flavors everything we do as a leader. And it seems to put everything in its proper perspective. So I, yeah. I that's what I mean by identity. Yeah. Fracture. You know, for, for things to, to say my identity, I get half of it from Jesus and half of it from the people in my congregation. That's so dangerous. I don't like that. You know, no. It, it, well, now you're now you're thinking about writing something. You go, well, I can't say that because that would offend that person. I can't say that because I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it really loud because that makes that person happy. Like, who are you writing the sermon for? Right. Your, your, your audience is the wrong one. You're there as an oracle of God, the Bible says. Anyone who speaks right. should do so as an oracle of God. So I, I speaking the truth and speaking it in love to people that you love, you care about. It's so important. But yeah, to 
that, that fracture, I'm going to get a fraction of my value from this source and a fraction from that. So there's only one place you can get your identity from. That's and right. this is, this is what the devil wants, right? When you, this mm-hmm. is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. And what's, what's the temptation three times? If you are the son of God, there you go. Like the devil didn't come after Jesus's virginity. He came after his identity. That's right. He, he didn't come after his, you know, his, his tithing record to make him feel guilty. Like he, he came after his identity. The devil's always going after mm-hmm. identity. And God is always giving identity to, to those who receive it. And the safest place in the world, man, is just, you know, being loved by God 100%. And now you can tell the truth. And if they don't like it or they do like it, it doesn't change you because yep. you didn't get your identity from that. Every time I step into a meeting, Jim, or I step into, yeah. onto a platform, I, 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 I pray very similar prayers. But part of that prayer is, God, I thank you that even if I tank today, <laughs> You still yeah. love me. And yeah. That's really what matters the most that I'm your, I'm your kid. You're proud of yeah. me. And, yeah, um, and that that's helps me it. just to relax and yes. not to try too hard. So let's look at the yes. second trap, wanting everybody in yeah. our church or business to, to be rowing in the same direction with us. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think, uh, uh, I think counteracting that. So not needing, everyone to be rowing in the same direction in order to have organizational momentum is not the same thing as letting work be a free for all, you know, where every person does what is right in their own eyes. Uh, You know, your leadership team better be rowing in the same direction as you are. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's different. Yeah. If not hard conversations need to be had. But, but here's my point. You won't get 100% unity on organizational direction from everyone who attends the church you lead or works for the business you run. But on the leadership team, I don't believe there's any wiggle room. No. no. And you don't I, need 100% from everybody to make yes. progress. So, Jim, I, I, think, I think there's a season of spiritual development where, you know, everything my pastor says is so wise. He's never made a mistake. This guy's awesome. But that should mature from a childlike relationship to maybe yeah. a more adolescent where you go, hey, I think I should disagree with him on that. And instead of instead of looking at that person saying, how dare you disagree with the man of God? You say, I observe that maybe you're maturing. You're getting you're getting senior pastor opinions because I see God evolving your ministry. So I think that's different that to, to disagree agreeably to yes. to bring insight, to bring I, what I've noticed through the years is healthy, wonderful, loving staff members. I've, I raised since they were puppies. And now they're they're just these awesome men and women of God. Often before they go out on their own to do something, they find fault in me, that, but they don't criticize me. They don't cut me down. They're just they're beginning to see what they're supposed to do. Not, you know, there's a reason 27 year olds shouldn't be living in their parents' basement. There right. should there should be a, a natural friction somewhere towards maturity where you go, you're not always right. And I'm going right. to do it differently. And I, and the same thing's true with our staff, but, but that there's a difference between maturing and seeing something differently and just being divisive, right? There, you, there, you know, the, it, there is a vision. We all have to row this vision, but, and, and anything other than that is division. If one person decides not to row, we go in circles. We, we all have to pull on the oars, similar speed, similar pace, yep. you know, in unity, or we don't, we don't achieve what we should be achieving. So yeah, leadership is, is, is rights and responsibilities. Those who are watching or seeing my hands, those who are listening, I'm raising and lowering my hands to various levels. But, you know, if I don't, not on your staff, I have all sorts of rights and I have no responsibilities. If I become a leader, I, 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 am, I have to decrease my rights as I increase my responsibilities. I have to. I'm, I'm responsible now as an usher, as a greeter, as a worship leader. I, 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 there's less of me because I'm giving it to, to this, to this mission. And then as sorts, we get into like pastoral ministry. There, there are very few rights. We've, we've relinquished most of them. Um, and I don't mean your, your, your family. I don't, I'm not saying that, no. but your time and that vision, your obedience, man, it belongs to that church. You're their pastor, you know, they're to some degree. Yeah. It also belongs to your wife, to your children, to yourself. But yeah, I, I, I think that the thought of, I'm going to make everybody happy and everybody's going to run the same direction. Yeah, yeah. It's okay to think that just don't be disillusioned when it doesn't happen and don't right. be paralyzed there you go. by that one guy who throws his oar down and goes, I'm not going that way. Maybe there's right. a reason like maturity. Maybe there's a reason like rebellion. Maybe he's mm-hmm. making you pay or she's making you pay for the sins of a predecessor. They learn not to trust people in authority yeah. or men or women or, you know, whatever. So if you can heal it, heal it. If you can applaud it and promote it, do so. If not, it needs to be corrected. 
Yeah. And so, and so the, I appreciate your perspective on that, Jim, because I, I do think um, we can lean in, in, in the direction of being heavy handed as leaders, as, as a oh response to this yeah. trap, right? Yeah. I'm not going to, yeah. I'm not going to let that happen to me. So I'm going to rule with an iron fist. Yeah. We don't advocate that in the least. Nope. That's, and, nope. and it, so your perspective, I think on, is this the natural maturing of this person and they're starting to develop their, their leadership yeah. or is it just plain out rebellion? Right. And there's yeah. a difference between the two. Difference. You know, I think raising kids is, is a great example, right? I mean, our, our boys started, uh, I started pulling away from us when they were six months old, you know, and, <laughs> and, wow. and becoming their I own person. Say 16. No, 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 six no. Months. <laughs> no, as babies. I mean, they started to yeah. like, you know, they started to want to become their own person very, very yeah. early on. And there's a difference yeah. between that and them being rebellious. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and determining that I didn't know that until after the kids were older, like, wow, yeah. I got upset about their behavior as these little guys, but, but really realistically, they were developing the way they should. And, uh, yeah. and I think sometimes we, we look at our team or we look at the people in our church and, and we broad brush it, right? Like they're not rowing with me. That means they're all rebels. Right. Or they're all right. bad. They're divisive. Yeah. Right. And I don't think, I think you, what you said is really, Hey, wait a minute. There's, there's yeah. some, there, there's some discerning that we need to do because it might not be rebellion. It might not be what we think it is. It might be they're yeah. growing up and they're right. starting to think for themselves. And I think that's I, actually, well, that's wonderful. Right. So we want to work. Yeah. On that. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So yeah. great, great perspective on that, Jim. Let's talk about the last trap, uh, wanting everybody to love your vision and your values and your playbook. Um, yeah. Look, tell yourself this. Not everybody is going to be excited about the vision you've cast yeah. and are casting. That's not, okay. a, not everybody will be a cultural fit in terms of core values Yeah. in your church. Yeah. You're going yeah. to have people who want to complicate your playbook. <laughs> They want to add more, more stuff. Uh, and um, those in and of themselves are not showstoppers, right? Um, every yeah. church, every business has some of those issues. Yep. And, and so don't allow, what I would say is don't allow the inability of the few who don't get it to discourage you. Yeah. From casting a bold vision, yeah. from running a great yep. playbook that's simple and, and moves the ball down the field. Don't, don't let a few people who don't get the idea of holding true to values, you know, those behavioral rumble strips that contain the yeah. ingredients for a healthy culture. Don't let that stop you. Yeah. Um, the trap is thinking that everybody has to see it a hundred percent the way you do, or you're a failure. Right. Yeah. You've done something wrong. Yeah, I, I was talking. I was working with a, a a board yesterday, Jim. I talked to you a little bit about yeah. this before, yeah. and I told them this. I said, "Look, we don't need a hundred percent buy-in for this thing to fly. Right? We need eighty yeah. percent. Yeah. <laughs> and the twenty percent of yeah. you who might not get on board, well, we'll deal with you later, you know. But the yeah the the fact of the matter is, is you don't have to have one hundred percent buy-in in these particular areas. For you to have success, to see growth, to see development. Um, Jim, yeah. what do you think about that? Yeah, there's there's a saying that emerged 20 years ago around here. I don't know who said it, but it's this will really help. And if you're a note taker, write this down. We tell people we are a church for anybody, but we're not a church for everybody. Mm. And, and so anybody that walks through those doors is going to be loved. They're going to hear the word. They're, they're, we're going to worship together. We're going to, but, but now I want to go off in this direction and I want to do that. And we have this, this committee that wants to, why don't we have a ministry for like, we're, we are a church for anybody, but we're not a church for everybody. And no church is a church for everybody. Mm. If, if there was, there'd be one church that met somewhere on the planet. And, mm. you know, even, I mean, as early in, in the church history as the book of revelations, there's, 
seven different churches. They get seven different words. I mean, uh, let's even get earlier than that. We've got the church in Antioch, who appears to be a missionary sending church. Nobody's shadow is healing the sick. You've got the Jerusalem church. Peter's shadow is healing people, but they're not ascending church. They don't send corrective letters to each other saying adjust your trajectory. We are the the prototype that is to be franchised. They they don't say that. They they look at differences as a completion of the body of Christ, not a competition in the body of Christ. Right. So I, I think saying to your congregation, to people in a membership setting, membership class setting, or even on a Sunday morning or somebody saying, hey, why don't you guys do more of this? Why don't you, why do you do so much of that? It's okay to say, listen, we're a church for anybody and we're so glad you walked through the doors, but we're not a church for everybody. And if that's what you're looking for, I know like five congregations within driving distance that I, I could recommend to you that would be a great fit for that. So someone walks into church on Sunday morning and they got their show far and they want to blow it during worship and spin the sword and the flag. It's like, listen, I, I know three churches within driving distance that would love to have you, but because we have the, the we're, we're a church that wants to reach the unreached, right? That would be confusing to them. So there are times when, when that might be okay at certain, you know, worship nights or something, I don't know, I'm making this up as I go along, but, mm-hmm. but it isn't, it isn't our Sunday morning thing. So decent and in order is not one standard. It, I've seen it play out differently. Every place I've been, there literally is a difference in decency and order. Every place I've been, it's not, it's not identical, mm-hmm. but what's weird is it is decent mm-hmm. and it is in order there. And you still know when people are out of order, even though it, there's great freedom, you know, when people are taking too much of it, or there's great, you know, Reverence, you know, when people are, are being too reverent and they're being judgmental. So just just be you. Um, I, I would say this too, that God, if you believe that God sent you there to serve them, then God is going to give you the vision for that church. Yeah, It resides in you. And with that, you may not be the smartest person in the room. You may not be the most experienced person in the room. You may not be, but you are the only person accountable to be the pastor in that room. Yeah. So That's good. trying to make everybody happy can deviate you from the vision God has given you. And that's, that's dangerous on so many levels. So be confident that he knew what he was doing when he called you to be there. That's so good. You know, Jim, I just a couple of, well, actually three final thoughts real quick. Yeah. And then I'll let you uh, uh, close us up here. Um, okay. If you're listening or watching today, you don't need everybody to like you to accomplish your assignment. Nope. Just don't use that as an excuse to remain underdeveloped in your people skills. It's a good word. Uh, secondly, <laughs> you don't need everyone to be rowing in the same direction to get where you're going. Yeah. Just don't allow or ignore. Let me put it that way. Don't, mm-hmm. don't allow yourself to ignore obvious warning signs that your leadership team is fragmenting. Yes. Yeah. It's great. And then third, you don't need everyone to be passionate about your vision, committed to your playbook, and living out the core values for you to reach the end zone. Uh, We often talk about vision being a destination, right? And we use football as an analogy, the end zone, man, that is the destination. Yeah. Um, yeah. But don't use the, the fact that you don't need everybody to be passionate about those things and committed to those things. Don't use that as a reason to stop casting vision. Yes. Stop being simple. In, in terms of your playbook and stop using values to shape the culture you want and need. So yeah. you're going to have headwinds in yeah. these areas. Always. Don't Always. allow those to discourage you and don't use those as an excuse to remain underdeveloped in those particular areas. So that, that would be my final 100%. thought. Final thought. Hundred percent. Yeah, and 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 John and I really hope that the, you know the person who asked this question, I really hope that that answered it. I, I mm-hmm. often know that when I get an answer to my questions during the process of that answer, there's about three more questions that are asked, and and we have found through the years that sometimes what a leader needs more than anything else is that second affirming voice. Mm-hmm. This is my vision. This is my dream. This is my passion. This is my opposition. Am I doing the right thing? Sometimes when you don't know what to do, you just don't do anything. And so at Converge, there, there is a wonderful group of people. Uh, John is our leader, um, and he has recruited some really, uh, Mary Seltzer, you know, find, find a, a, a better person than Mary Seltzer, find a better person than, than a lot of the people that serve on this team. So if you're like, I just don't know what to do next, either we know somebody, they're on their team, 
or we know somebody off the team that can help you. And so convergecoach.com, there's a link saying, I want to have a half hour conversation. And sometimes in a half hour, we can hear your heart. We can, we can understand the dynamic and we can say, boom, I, you're right on. This is now you're right on. You're ahead of 90% of the people that, that are, that have the same ideas. Like you should go for this. And sometimes that, that, that second affirming voice is all we need to give us that shove to mm-hmm. get back to leading and get out of that cycle of all the opinions. And once you lead, people get people will be accustomed eventually to a leader. Mm-hmm. They, they, they will understand. Uh, I have a stepfather. Uh, he's passed away now, but he was not my leader. He was, he was my mom's boyfriend that became whatever. But in time, because he, he led, he became the leader, my leader, not just the leader of my family and for tax purposes, but literally became my father. And, and the same thing can be true. If you lead, you'll find out who's following and man, though, they, it's, it's such a good thing to be obedient to God. So we're here for you. Connect with us. Uh, we might be able to connect you with somebody else that's going through what you're going through or went through it a year ago. And, and you will get the help you need to get back on track. And we are here for you, praying for you, love you. Connect with us and we will talk to you soon as you continue to lead from alignment. Mm-hmm.